Okay. Again, Denver Buffalo. Denver scored exactly what we thought they would score. Buffalo scored less. What two factors that we're measuring? What what would cause this? A team to score less. Okay, we can do in the abstract, but let's let's do a little more general. What, remember, we have two things for both teams. Which two aspects of the team affects their score? Offense and the opponent's defense, right? So if they scored less, what are what are two possibilities? The offense did what? Yeah, underperformed, right? Or another alternative is what? Yeah, the other team's defense overperformed. Okay? We have to figure, is it either one or the other or could it be both? Yeah, it could be both. It could be one or the other too. We don't know yet. So now what we need to do is look at the, the results. So here's what I want you to do. Is I want you to go, let's go Yahoo Sports. They give a good sports NFL. And go scores. Why not? Okay, NFL on Yahoo Sports. Yeah, I don't need to see your movie. Okay, everybody at this page? Yep. So let's go to scores and schedule. Okay, let's find the Bronco game. What this does is it gives a nice recap on what happened. And what I'm really concerned with is the statistics. So click on this, the final. So it'll bring up this screen here. And it gives you a little su uh, scoring summary, but it also gives you team stats here. Okay, Buffalo underperformed, their offense did. What are some of the differences here? Let's take a look. Let's look at these columns. First downs, total yards, turnovers. I mean, that's what's crazy here is that Buffalo actually had more first downs than Denver did, which would seem to suggest that their their offense was, you know, performing pretty well, right? Total yards, Buffalo actually had more yards than the Broncos did. Turnovers, same thing. Three turnovers apiece, but they all balance each other out, right? That one team had three turnovers, the other team had three turnovers. Let's keep going down here. What's the big difference? Take a look. We keep going. Net yards passing. Shh. Buffalo outpassed the Broncos big time. And if you watch the game, that was a pretty boring game. <laughs> I'm happy we could run the ball, but honestly, it was boring to watch. But it, it worked, right? They won. What's different here? They got sacked four times, right? What maybe could that reflect? The defense on the on the Broncos, right? And that's what you find is this is kind of a great metric to show you or to indicate whether a team's underperforming is the sacks. This is a gives you a good idea, kind of a metric on how much the other team's defense is getting to this team's offense. And it even goes beyond that. Trust me, you can dig in. I've dig, dug in these numbers a lot. Let's look down here. So this is kind of the summary here on the right side, right? Keep going down. Go to Let's go to passing here. Okay. Here's the two quarterbacks. You can usually get a lot of good information here. Okay. Here's the comp completions, attempts. Kyle Orton was throwing the ball much more. Uh, percentage, yards after the play. Here's again. Here's a big difference here. Sacks. Kyle Orton was sacked four times. How many times did Peyton Manning get sacked? Zero. Zero. Right? And they scored exactly what we thought they would. There was no pressure there. Their defense was not having that significant effect on on Peyton Manning. Or at least that's my interpretation of it. We can even look down here. Go down to the defense. OK. 
Okay. Is everybody down here? Okay. So if we look under the SAC column, there are no SACs here. Now I'm going to tell you right now, this is a critical thing. This is just almost as important as the SACs. Passes deflected. PD. How many passes did the Buffalo defense deflect? Two. Okay, now let's look here. So again, we said there was four sacks, right? How many passes did the Denver defense deflect? Seven. Yeah. So again, now you're kind of seeing how this works, right? We underestimated Buffalo, their offense, based on the algorithm. We go into the stats and we find variables that are different that we think it can, can account for that difference in predicted versus observed. When we look, we find that the one metric that's truly different or the one aspect, the stat that's different is sacks and passes defended. So somehow these two aspects are playing a role in our system. And so in the future, Mental note, let's, you know, we can, if we can somehow try to estimate the number of sacks and passes deflected, maybe we can get to that. Maybe we can uh, estimate how underperforming a team might be. Again, it's all this information to make our stuff more accurate. Okay? So now, and here's what I do, is then I go to my spreadsheet both of them had two, actually two interceptions, which should help their score. But somehow, and again, so it should help their score, but at the same time, they also had, in Buffalo, the Denver defense got four sacks and seven takeaways. So I kind of put that down here, that the two interceptions... And if we look at the difference in the score, so Buffalo was supposed to score about 23. They scored 17, so the difference is about 6. Yeah, right. So maybe if we take the amount of pass deflected away from this one, we have 4 sacks plus 5 pass deflections probably equals about 6 points. So now, from now on, what we can do is, if we can estimate the number of sacks and the number of passes deflected, maybe we turn that into a number that we're going to take away from that team. That if there's a difference there, that, and, and, I, and I'll show you, what I've come up with is I say we use two-thirds of that number. Whatever the number of total sacks and, you know, passes deflected they're supposed to get for the game, let's, I'm going to make that two-thirds I'm going to convert that into two-thirds and then take that away from that team score. I think you're, you're going to see how this works out. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go this way and we're going to talk about some of these games we missed. And we're, we're going to see if we see a common theme is in these other games. So we just observed this in the Bronco-Buffalo Bronco game, right? It's, all, it's an occurrence unless we see it more than once. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at some of those games and teams who scored less, we're going to determine we're going to see if there's a difference in these two variables with those teams as well. If we see the same trend, then that means that we're onto something and that somehow we should be trying to compute this or estimate this for all future games. Does that make sense? All right. So, let's let's start talking about these games and going into some of these variables.